This is a Damascus dagger that I made. I think it came out absolutely beautifully, but it still needs a handle. And I think it deserves a handle that's equally as beautiful. So I am going to do my best. I've never been good at this part of knife making. And I think this piece of wood that I put in this drawer five minutes ago is going to be perfect. This is a piece of book. But goat, I think that's how you pronounce it. And I also have these pieces of brass. This needs to be a guard. This piece needs to be a pommel. So it'll look something like that. But we can start with getting a hole in this piece of wood for this tang to get in there. All right, so for this handle block, I wanna do something kinda special. I wanna bed the tang on this. And what that is, is I need to cut this off. Uh, this has nothing to do with bedding the tang. I just need to cut this off. So I need to get this tang inside this handle and like have a really snug fit so it's not like wobbling around in there. I can cover the tang in wax, cover this whole section, and then, then with the wax on, I can shove this in that hole and fill up all the gaps with epoxy and this will just pop straight out. So anyway, that's the game plan. I need to get a hole in this now. Should I mark the center? Yeah, sure. Be all fancy with it. Uh, 1.44, so... Uh, 9.2 or 0.92, that's not even, wow, I'm, oh, 7.2. Yep, I'm big brain in today. That's not in the, that's not in the middle, is it? No, it's not even close to the middle, whatever. What's the chance that these holes are gonna line up? <laughs> There's no shot. Okay, pro gamer time. I need a hole going all the way through this handle. I just need to line it up exactly. But luckily, I'm a pro gamer. And if I just like line it up, yes. Yep, right there. Oh wait, actually? Oh my God, that is shockingly close. I was kind of playing a bit. I wasn't expecting to even hit it. So I need to widen this hole and I'll just do that with the drill bit. It's not the best, but you can cut sideways with the drill bit. So this part is like very rough and dirty, but that's okay because when you bed the tang with the epoxy, that'll fill up all the gaps and make a perfect super tight fit in there. It'll be great. It's, it's just gonna be really quick and dirty for now. Where is it? Um, where did I put it? Oh, there it is. Now, other side. This should be super quick. Yeah, this like handle brooch, this like tiny saw is absolutely amazing for this. It was made for exactly this. I don't know why I'm so surprised by that, but the, um, that should be good now. That was super quick. Let's go. Yes, look at that. Oh, I love you handle brooch. So now I want to, I was hoping something would come to me. Do I want to work on the guard now? I'm really scared of the guard. Okay, the reason I am terrified to do this guard is the fit up with the blade has to be very accurate. Let me get a uh, an example. So where this guard lines up with the blade, this, it's very common to have gap. You see that gap that like can open up? That is really difficult for that gap to not be there. It has to be very accurate and you really only get one shot. You can kind of fudge it, but I don't have that much room on this piece of brass. So I have to get it pretty much in the first try. And that's something I'm not very good at. So I think I'll just cut this to length, kind of get it roughly shaped and then do that first. Or actually, you know, actually, I don't think I'm gonna shape anything. I'm just gonna do that first. And then I can shape the guard around it if I didn't mess it up. You know, a surprising challenge that you never really think of when trying to do stuff like this is drawing accurate lines. Like that's, 
It's so important to be able to draw an accurate line, and it's like so not obvious how to do that. Like you think it's just a line, like I can just draw a line and it'd be good enough, but like no, it's not good enough. I have to like <laughs> put effort into it, that's so annoying. <laughs> okay, so I need a rectangle in the middle of this bar. This edge is more square than that edge, so I'm gonna work everything off of this edge. Okay, yeah, so that's not that difficult. I just need two lines that are the same width as the thickness of this blade. Okay, I have two lines now. Yeah, the other sides need to be very accurate, but that doesn't need to be like incredibly accurate. And that looks perfect. Oh my God. That was so exciting. Subscribe for more line drawing content. Okay, so then to make this slot, I'm just gonna draw a bunch of holes going down the middle. Ooh, okay, so exciting. Step numero uno is drill probably like three holes. Step numero dos is to use the cutest little ember on the planet. Look at that thing. Can you look at this thing? It's so cute, the camera doesn't even focus on it. Um, do I have, actually, yas, this would be so much better. <laughs> that was stupid, I, I'm sorry for saying yas. Use this? Yeah, I'm gonna switch to this. Step three is to use this itty bitty widow file. Oh, it's so cute. This is all so adorable. This needs to go in this slot, which it doesn't yet. And I can't have any gaps. If I have any, calm down. I kicked the tripod. If I have any gaps, I have to do something to fix it since that's, it looks really bad. This file doesn't really cut on its side, which sucks. Oh, because that, if I use the side that cuts on the side, it cuts on the side. Ain't that crazy? <laughs> yeah, see it's going, going further now. I'm feeling really good about this though. I think it's gonna all work out fine. Do I have any reason to be confident? Absolutely not. Oh, did I? I might have gone too far. Oh my God. Uh, I knew I was gonna do that, I went too far. All right, so you just saw me trying to close up that gap that was in the guard. There was a gap because I went too fast. And I was using the ball peen hammer and this thing for that. I was using them to squish the brass and like push it into closer to the blade to close up that gap. Hopefully that made sense. But it's looking really good so we can start getting the profile of the guard in. So I just need to blue dicum this back up and we can start laying out all of the shapes for the guard. Do everything that I just explained. I'm just talking now, so you have to watch me put blue dicum on this. So I'm just gonna check everything by eye to make sure everything looks lined up and square and it looks really good. Mainly stuff like the blade being centered is super important. Uh, with electrical tape it's gonna be weird, but 277 thou that try to hit one layer of electrical tape. Yeah, pretty close. Yeah, this main portion of the guard looks centered to the ends of the blade, which is perfect. All looks really good. I think what I should do now, just because I don't want to be working on one piece for too long, because that gets really boring, 
is a bedded tang on this handle block. Yeah, so I could cut the tang down now, which I think that is what I want to do. Yeah, okay. So I'm just gonna cut off that little bit of metal poking out, and then I think I just put a piece of painter's tape on this side to plug that hole so the epoxy doesn't spill out. So I think the plan is I'll use these clamps, not these clamps. I'll use these clamps like this to do that. I'm gonna use like car wax for this. Not because like I need car wax specifically. Um, it's just what I used before and it works. So I'm not gonna change that up. Just need to melt it a bit. Okay, so cover this completely and the guard since I don't want this sticking either. Okay, that looks good. That's on the wrong way. <laughs> so now just fill this up with epoxy, shove it on and we're Gucci. These gloves always do this, I, it's so annoying. These are like the cheapest gloves I could find. That's probably why they rip. Okay, dokey. Yo, you can mix epoxy upside down. Oh. No, that was too much. Just gotta wait for it to go in the hole now. Go in the hole. Wait, it's actually working? Come on, I should get a smaller stick. There we go. Perfect. Okay, that should be good. I'm so glad I used my brain this time and decided to put on gloves. Yeah, that's super full. That's gonna spill out a bunch, which is good. Uh, I'm gonna change gloves. I don't get epoxy on stuff I don't wanna get epoxy on. Oh, there's not that much spilling out. Um, that's concerning. Okay, we'll see if that was enough. Not that much epoxy spilled out. I expected there to be a lot. That's like bending it. I don't wanna bend it. There we go. Perfect. Okay. And try to dissolve some of the extra epoxy. I need to poke it with something. I think we're good. Alrighty, the glue is cured and hopefully this handle is just gonna pop right off. Sometimes they don't really want to. We'll see how lucky I am. If it, come on. Please, please, Ugh. huh. Um, there's some glue around that cured. I could try cutting that. Hopefully this is it that's stopping it from coming off. There's not too much I can do if this doesn't want to come off. Please, come on. Huh, let me take a look at the back. Oh, maybe, what I think it is, is all of this epoxy that cured that's hitting or grabbing on the end of that tang. I hope that's it. So I'm gonna grind a little bit off and see if it'll pop off. Ah, kind of mangling everything up right now too. I'm taking off epoxy though. This is doing something. Oh. Yes, oh, the guard's wiggling. Please? No. <laughs> well, I know it's not the guard now. Uh, five minute epoxy isn't strong enough. You should better epoxy. I think that's pretty good epoxy. <gasps> yes. Oh, thank God. I didn't bend this. Did I? Ooh, maybe I did. Did I? No. So that means that I can take the guard, try to find the little notch that I put on there, uh, this way, slide that right on, then take the handle, see the little notch that I put on the handle, I think that's it, and it all fits up perfectly with no wobble. Oh, that's beautiful. So I think I'm gonna work on getting the handle shaped so it's not just like a block right now. And I want uh, this width of the handle um, it's gonna be the same as the width going into the pommel, but I want 
that to be the same width as that section of the blade. If we look, if we look at this Bowie knife that I made a long time ago, you can see this section of the Rocasso doesn't line up with this section of the handle. That looks really stupid. So I want to be careful with this knife to make sure that they line up, they look really good. It just helps the whole blade like flow together well. It looks nice. And for the handle shaping, I think I want to make an octagon, like a completely symmetrical octagon. I think that will feel like really cool in the hand to have all the like sharp lines. But before we work on that, I want to clean up uh, this whole mess. All right, so this is at 120 grit right now, and I wanna bring this to its final finish before I octagonalize it, because right now I have a lot of surface to like uh, reference off of, so I know that it's flat against the grinder. It's really easy to do that right now. When it's octagonalized, there's less surface to, to feel on the grinder and on sandpaper, there's less stuff to feel. So I'll bring this to 200 grit on the belt grinder, then I'll bring it to 600 grit, 600 and then 1000 grit. Yep. I think with some steel wool and then some oil, it'll look really good. This is more of just a test to see how the finish turns out. And oh my God, that looks so good. I think there's just a lot of pits in this type of wood, which is why you see those. And those aren't gonna come out with just a higher finish, but that looks really good. Especially after it's an octagon and there'll be like more things to catch the light. That'll look really cool. I love how much contrast there is. Oh, look at that. So now we got the guard and the handle at a really good spot. They're all squared off and even, and it's easy to work off of. But you might have noticed, haven't even started on the pommel yet. And that's because I'm a little bit scared of the pommel. But ooh, would you look at the time? It's not pommel time. <laughs> but yeah, that's it for now. I'm gonna work on that pommel later, so. Bye. <laughs>